Now what's going to happen is we can still drag it around. However, when we get to the edges, you can see that it doesn't actually go beyond the edges because we've contained it to the actual document and the same with the other side as well. Now the difference to this is that we could actually inside here, um, let's say specify um, a style. So style type equals text CSS. So we could create the um, we could create uh, say the body uh, to have uh, let's just say margin left 50 pixels. Now you can see that even though our document um, uh, actually starts with a, a margin here, we can drag it beyond these as well. So we can drag it in the entire document itself. Uh, and this is extremely similar, let's just get rid of that. This is extremely similar to the window value as well. However, this will constrain to the window itself and not just the document. So you can see that we can still drag it slightly beyond uh, the um, the document here, uh, but it's constrained to the actual window itself. So very similar uh, properties here, but we can actually uh, do something with these. You know, you you might have different uses for these. Now we're going to go on now and look at parent. Now at the moment, the parent of this uh, this um, element is the actual window itself. Although we can still drag down the page here now, uh, we want to constrain it perhaps to a particular element. Now let's go ahead and surround this span with a div. And let's indent that. And let's apply a style to this div. Uh, let's go ahead and make the width 200 pixels and the height 200 pixels as well. And let's just set a background color of so now that we've got a, a specific window here, if we were to say uh, supply document here, we can obviously drag this outside of this um, surrounding div. So we can drag it anywhere on the page we want or anyone, anywhere on the document we want. However, if we were to choose the parent value here, uh, you'll see that automatically now this is contained within this parent and we can't actually drag it outside of this parent here. So I'm trying to drag outside of this div, however, it's not letting me. So this is probably a more practical example of the containment option where you can specify a particular element to only uh, be within the boundaries of a parent element. Okay, so let's just get rid of this div here. Uh, we also have um, a an option to specify uh, containments um, with regards to supplying the actual co coordinates of the area. So this time in square brackets, it's important to note we can choose uh, the uh, x. Uh, we can choose x1, xy, x2, and y2. So we can specify um, a starting and ending area. So let's just, for example, say zero zero and end this at 200, we've now created what would be a rectangle or a, a square, I guess, if you like. Although we're not uh, actually con uh, containing this inside a div, we're specifying coordinates ourselves uh, that we don't want this drag me to move out of. So now you can see I can't drag it out of this particular area. So you can sort of see the shape that it's formed um, and we can specify particular a particular area inside of our document that we don't want uh, the element to move out of. So that's the containment option. We're now going to move on to look at the cursor option. Now this is uh, probably less practical but a bit more interesting in the sense that you might want to create you know some kind of visual um, visual effect for your user, uh, we can specify the cursor that is displayed when we actually drag a particular element. So by default, we use uh, the uh, cursor, like uh, you can see at the moment, it's got the uh, highlighting cursor that we'd usually highlight and uh, some text with. We can change this. So at the moment, it's as it, as, at its default. For example, I could choose uh, crosshair, and this would create a cross icon you can see it's changed to a cross when I drag uh, or for example you could choose 
pointer, which is probably slightly more appropriate, and this creates a pointer hand icon um, as we drag. So now we know when we're dragging an object, obviously, but now we've created an icon to suit the overall concept of actually dragging. So we're dragging this around. So I think the pointer, um, I think the pointer icon uh, works well with dragging elements. Okay, so as well as that, we're going to move on to some other options. However, we're going to comma separate these so we can supply more than one option. So now at the moment, as the element is being dragged, we're changing to this pointer cursor, but we also want to take a look at other elements and include these uh, as well. So the next one we're going to take a look at is the opacity. Uh, and obviously the opacity is um, the you know display of this from zero to uh, or from zero to one or from one to a hundred usually uh, just basically it's visibility so for example if I was to choose um, 0 0.6 oh, or 0.6 uh, so 0 0.60 uh, this now has an opacity of 60 percent so this is only whilst dragging so you can see that the colors are um, as normal when we're not dragging however when we're dragging you'll notice that the pointer has changed as well as the opacity so this is another useful effect for when dragging because we now um, you know we sort of see the element as it's being dragged and it's also important to note that if we're dragging over things um, we can see uh, behind these uh, as well so if we were to have other elements in our page and we were dragging over them we now have the opacity set to 60% or 0 0.60 in this case okay so the next option we're going to look for and again we're going to uh, comma separate this we're going to look at the um, let's say grid option now uh, the grid option takes uh, two values and these are the um, uh, the points of the grid if you like so I'm going to choose 20 and 20 now what this is going to do is it's going to allow this element to be snapped to a particular grid at the moment we can freely move it around anywhere on our page and we have no grid to snap to however what this grid option is going to do is create is going to create an invisible 20 by 20 grid which is going to allow us when we refresh the page to actually snap this to a particular grid